now that after completing my electrical engineering i know how things work and how things move how the production environment works so on a single uh, day of my life when i when i uh, eat a piece of bread in the morning i think about how it's made how the packing is done from where it has traveled how long it takes uh, uh, it to get here how the whole process went through it always fascinates me welcome to eco ask why a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. So welcome to Eco Ask Why. This is a fun episode where we get to talk to one of our heroes, Mr. Santa Thankaville. Welcome, Santa. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you doing? How are you? Pretty good. That's good. That's good. So Santa is a, a network security and information product manager here at ECO. Uh, he's based out of Richmond. Very excited to sit down with Santa. He's helped us on several episodes talking about remote connectivity, industrial cybersecurity. Uh, Santa is definitely an expert. Uh, what he does, just a fun, fun guy to work with. So we're, we're very excited just to sit down and talk with you, Santa. Maybe just talk to us about how you got to where you are now, man. Sure. So uh, I've been with Eco for like three years now, and it's been an exciting journey uh, how I got here. And uh, ever since I've been here, I'm really proud of what I do and how, would, uh, how I do it for Eco. So uh, I came from a, a farming background family back in India. Uh, I was born and raised there. And I got passion towards electronics ever since I was in high school. And I got into a bachelor's degree to complete my electronics and communication program. And I successfully did complete that. Uh, however, I ended up working for an IT organization as an IT network engineer, which I uh, am not so much impressed with myself. I wanted to pursue more uh, of a higher education to, do a, uh, to get a master's degree. So uh, that's uh, what brought me here to the United States. And uh, I got to Texas and got enrolled in University of Texas and completed my master's degree in electrical engineering. And then uh, I, got, I went to work for a, a pharmaceutical manufacturer uh, in King of Prussia, a suburb in Philadelphia for about like one year. And I worked as a senior network engineer there. And uh, with my uh, electrical engineering background and networking expertise and experience, uh, I got into ECO as Rockwell Partner Cisco. They are looking for a Cisco certified engineer, and that got me here. And I do have my uh, cousin living in Blacksburg, Virginia. So kind of a win-win for both uh, myself and the company. So they're in Blacksburg. So they go, uh, they're a hokey? <laughs> yeah, he is not a hokey. Uh, he still likes the cowboys there back in texas uh, because uh uh he went to school in texas i got you i got you now you said something that i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to when you first started about you a, a little bit about yourself you said you're in a farming community so what type of farming were you uh was your family involved in a lot of uh, uh sugarcane uh turmeric and other yams these are quite popular back in my place these things require less water uh the the place i grew up is kind of dry so uh these are the suitable things that they can uh, farm over there and uh my grandfather owned a little bit of cattle as well so so you've done it all from a farming standpoint so you didn't want to work on a farm you wanted to work in electrical stuff huh uh, the, yes, uh, <laughs> my dad uh, uh, went away from the farming. I mean, he uh, still see a little bit of farming, but he went away from that and uh, started his own business into the textile. That's I know that's totally opposite from farming, but he ended up successful in there, and he wants me to take over that. But my passion was always to do electrical engineering or some form of engineering. The innovations always uh, driven me to find something new. So uh, that's why I ended up being an engineer. Now that's that's great. Now you said you went to University of Texas. What what did you enjoy most about going there, man? The the biggest thing is well, one of my professor worked for uh, Nokia, and he had almost all the projects from the scratch. And these are not just the standard academic projects. These are like commercial projects, uh, maybe a smaller version of what he used to do at his work. He gave us guidance, and that was the, uh, the best thing that I uh, ever did in my master's degree. Okay. 
Now, so did you live down in Texas during that part time or was this uh, remote learning? How, how did that work? No, I actually lived in uh, near to Dallas, uh, a small city called Irving. And I went to school from there. And uh, I loved being in Texas. Uh, I love barbecue. Uh, even though I, I don't eat any beef, uh, I, I like uh, a lot of pork. So I eat a lot of pork barbecue over there. And there are really nice places to eat and see around. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Wow. Personally, we're glad that you made it from Texas up to Eco in Virginia. So we're just uh, very blessed to have you working with this. And you know, you you do a lot with, from, with within Eco from a networking security standpoint. You see a lot of things are changing, and that's kind of the cool part about your role. You're on the front lines of of so much technology that's changing. What do you see that some of the greatest challenges the industry has over the next five years from 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 your vantage point? Uh, the biggest thing would be implementing security for most of our customers. Uh, a lot of our customers are moving towards uh, smart manufacturing or industry 4.0, trying to get all the devices connected to each other, having a lot of wireless devices. Previously, 10, 15 years back, wireless was not even possible in the production environment. But now, even the I.O. is going to be on wireless in high-speed wireless communication. So... When we are going uh, that fast into smart manufacturing and industry 4.0, we need to be more aware of the security as well. So I think that's the biggest thing in the next five to 10 years, uh, having all our customers uh, accomplish or start their industrial cybersecurity journey. Right. No doubt. No doubt. Now, we're also trying to, with this podcast, inspire people and help them along their personal journeys. And you, you've come a long way. What's some advice you'd like to give somebody that they, if they're considering to pursue a career like yours? Uh, sure. So, for example, I had a lot of background or most of my background in the IT networking world prior to this role. A few of my friends actually told me that you won't end up in an industrial manufacturing or an electrical field with just your degree. Since you have a lot of experience in the IT, you most likely would end up in the IT or the enterprise networking. But I tried every bit possible and I got it ended up in the manufacturing side. So it doesn't matter what your experience is on. If you have the skills and the expertise, you can land wherever you want it to. There you go. There's your inspiration right there. Now, how do you stay on top? So much is changing. What do you do? What are some practices that you use or that you implement to stay on top of what is changing? Is it you know, reading? Is it you know conferences, just groups? Just curious on what's out there to stay on top of the ever-changing world that you're involved in. Sure. So uh, I'm a big social media person. So a lot of people use the social media for fun and stuff. I use these social medias to follow some uh, technological companies, some uh, new technical innovation updates, uh, stuff like that. So whenever I surf through my social media, I uh, get rid of my boredom as well as I gain knowledge out of it. I'm always a fan of new technologies uh, in terms of anything like a new mobile phone, a new camera, a new drone is launched. I'm always on top of that. So... A new technology always fascinates me, so I try to learn as much as possible whenever a new technology is launched. Now, that's very good that you said that you know you're, you're pretty big in social. And we, we've seen you out there; you do a lot of, of good stuff from from the social media standpoint. So, who do you follow? I mean, wh wh who would you recommend following for listeners that that are interested in the same types of things that you are? A uh, lot of key decision makers with uh, uh, the companies or the industry that I involved with. So, for example, I follow uh, people from uh, Rockwell Automation and I also people for, uh, from competitors as well because I wanted to know what my competition is doing out there. wanted to know what people are doing in Europe versus what they are doing in uh, USA here. As well as uh, I follow people who do TED Talks in terms of technology. So uh, those are the uh, areas that I focus on. Okay, very good. Now, what about mentors? I mean, who do you have out there? This is an opportunity for you to give a shout out to people who have helped your career. Any mentors that have helped you along the way that you like to recognize? Sure. Um, I could definitely say my cognizant supervisor, uh, his name is Radha Krishnan. And he helped me or he motivated me to pursue further in the higher education because uh, back in India, it's really difficult if you have a break in between the uh, bachelor's and the master's. Uh, 
it's really difficult to get the master's. So uh, he motivated me. He is the one who drives me to do the master's degree when I was in the IT, trying hard to fit in there. Okay. So do you see that master's was that was that a for for your field and your expertise is that a pretty hard line requirement that you feel like people should have? Not at all. I mean, uh, I wanted to gain more knowledge into the electrical side of things. The bachelor's degree, almost everybody got a bachelor's degree nowadays. So I wanted to be uh, distinguished from the the bunch of crowd out there. So that's what I did the master's degree for. And it gave me a lot of knowledge, a lot of in-depth knowledge of the the things that we use on a day-to-day life. Absolutely. Well, hats off to you for completing that. That's, that's no uh, easy undertaking by any means. So let's talk about the, the things that get you excited about it in, in, in your role and at work. What type of projects or work gets you pumped up that you really enjoy doing? Whenever an OT personal uh, proactively reaches out to me and says that they wanted to improve their network infrastructure, that excites me because a lot of the times the OT people, they are not concerned about their network infrastructure because they don't see the network infrastructure as a return of investment. They always see their production devices like PLCs, HMIs, industrial PCs, anything else, the sensors, whatnot as an return of investment because that's going to give them products that's going to make them money but the network is just going to make these devices connected to each other that's all the network is going to do so that the network is not like an immediate or direct return of investment so a lot of people are not proactively doing that but if somebody who reaches out to me proactively that excites me a lot and uh, i'd love to help people like those right absolutely sounds like you're very passionate about that man no doubt so can you give us maybe a highlight, something that went really cool when you look back and you say, you know what, I was a part of that project. What, what would that be? Back in my bachelor's degree, I did the telecommunications layout for my whole university. I think that was uh, a little bit of uh, an achievement for me at that age, uh, doing it for my whole university. So I, I consider that as my one big accomplishment till date. Okay. Well, that sounds like a fun one. Uh, how about uh, maybe let's let's take a little step outside of work here for a second. So, you let our listeners know a little bit more about you. What, what's what's some hobbies you have? Um, I like anything outdoors. I'm a big outdoorsy person, so I like playing badminton. Uh, I like to uh, trek and hike a lot, and I like to go out on a drive, and I like outdoor activities like uh, the planing, rafting, and things like that. So I'm a big outdoorsy person. So zip lining and rafting. So you got a little bit of an adrenaline junkie in you, huh? Yes. Uh, I, you know what? I even uh, zip lined over like 150 live alligators in uh, Florida once. So, Santa, now that you've come on board of Eco, we cannot let you zip line over top of live alligators. You're way too important. <laughs> just saying, man. Uh, just make sure. I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. So, also, you know, Eco, we're a big family. We love to hear about our hero families here. So, you, can you share anything with us about your family? Sure. I've been with Eco for like three years. And after the first year, I got married to my wife, Saumya Devi. She's from India too. And one of the biggest reasons that I shine in my current role is because of my wife. She is being very supportive in uh, whatever the things I do for Eco and stuff like that. So uh, we recently had a, a baby girl. Uh, she is almost 45 days old now. And they, they are my world to me. Baby girl, I hear you, buddy. That is that nothing like daddy's little girl. Trust me. Yep. I have. And her name is uh, uh, Umayal. Uh, she goes by Maya. Goes by Maya. Well, that's awesome. Well, she's got a hero for a dad. That's that's great, man. Got uh, and trust me, there's, there's nothing like little girls. I have two, and I have one that's due any day now for my third girl. So uh, you got lots of fun coming in your future, my friend. Yep, I heard that from my friends, too, who had girls. Absolutely. Now, maybe when they get to teenagers, I don't have the teenagers yet, so those listeners out there who have the teenagers and girls, uh, I feel for you, and I will be there one day. But for, for right now, you are a superhero to, to Maya's. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, what are you curious about right now? What are you studying, Santa? I'm constantly updating myself on the industrial cybersecurity part. 
I recently uh, completed my Cisco security certification. I already have the routing and switching certification. I'm also working towards some cloud certification because the world is going towards cloud and a lot of our customers are trying to store their data on some cloud infrastructure. So uh, studying the, the cloud networking and cloud security is uh, what I'm doing right now. Okay, so where do you go to, st to, to study some of that stuff? Is that all online resources or these courses uh, you have yes, to take? I, yep. I prefer online. I use course RA and then I use uh, Udemy for studying some of these. Okay, so you, you, you really like those as, as resources to get that information. Yes, I do. Yeah, so they are really good, uh, but I, I don't think that's just enough because uh, once you do that, you have to do some research on your own. You have to do some practicing and stuff like that. Uh, I also study some from Amazon Web Services Cloud. Okay. Are you, would you be considered like a, a, a hands-on learner or do you do better you know, absorbing the information you know, that you read and then applying it? What works best for you? I'm a, a hands-on and a visual learner, so I like to learn things or I like to uh, show things visually. I, uh, anything in terms of a picture or layout, I understand that easily. And uh, I like to do a, quite a bit of hands-on as well, because once I do that myself, uh, it stays in my mind forever. So I don't forget that. Okay. So let's play a quick game, Santa. I'm sure. going to put you in a, I'm going to put you inside of a plant and let's say you're the, uh, the, the chief officer over cybersecurity and you had a big bucket of money that was just yours to do with whatever you want to do it with, where would you spend that money? Sure. I'll analyze or I'll have the assessment of my uh, network first. So the first thing I would be spending my money is uh, having a, a network security assessment to validate the network and find out the vulnerabilities. And after finding out the vulnerabilities, I'll prioritize them and uh, fix them one by one. Okay. Now I'm going to play the same game with you. Um, we're taking you out of the plant. Now you're just at your house with your wife and your, and your new daughter. And we gave you a big bucket of money and you could spend it on anything. What would it be? Sure. So uh, I'm a big fan of technology, like I already said before. So uh, I'll uh, get some new gadgets that is uh, latest and greatest. And also I am a, a big believer in charities and stuff so i still contribute to some of the charities back in india and here as well so i'll do a part of the money for the charities i hear you man i tell you what that is that is a that that speaks a lot to your character santa that really does so uh great answer great answer what do you wish you had more time to do away from work buddy from the work uh i would like to paint go on a road trip meet with friends Stuff like that. I got you. I got you. Understood. So, I mean, we're, we're recording this right now in the middle of COVID. The, our world is changing. You know, the industrial manufacturing world is changing daily. You know, and with, with COVID, what do you see, man? What, what, what's the future look like from, from a manufacturing standpoint? How do you see stuff that's changing? The COVID has uh, clearly witnessed the importance of the remote connectivity. For example, uh, even within ECOS, uh, remote connectivity. So without that, we will not be able to access our equipment, which is in the Richmond lab. So now with the remote connectivity, myself and other product managers like m me are, are accessing the equipment on a day-to-day -day basis. So our production is not, our productivity is not affected. So this COVID thing, has clearly established the importance of remote connectivity. And you cannot just implement remote connectivity on a single day. So you have to plan for it and you have to you, ha you have to do it in stages. So you have to do it prior to some circumstances like this. No doubt. I mean, instead of just for us here reacting, and that's what, unfortunately, so many people are having to react right now because, I mean, who would have thought this would have happened, first of all, and then that it lasting as long as it's lasting. So you know, great, great, great answer there. And, you know, maybe to kind of help us wrap us up here, we call it eco -S -Y. We interview our heroes and Santa, you are one of the heroes. We always like to get to the purpose and, and what drives individuals. So can you give our listeners out there? I mean, it could be people that are really considering entering this industry or entering manufacturing or going into a very similar field as you. What is your purpose? What drives you? Why? 
do you enjoy doing what you do? Um, like I said, I was always fascinated by automation and engineering. And uh, now that after completing my electrical engineering, I know how things work and how things move, how the production environment works. So on a single uh, day of my life, when I, when I uh, eat a piece of bread in the morning, I think about how it's made, how the packing is done from where it has traveled, how long it takes uh, uh, it to get here, how the whole process went through, it always fascinates me. Th those are the stuff uh, on a day-to-day -day products that I use, how it's manufactured, if I think about it, it drives me more to do, to be in this profession. Man, that's wonderful. And, uh, you know, instead of bread, maybe, you know, go visit a diaper plant. That, that'll that be coming handy for you here lately, man. Yep, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm using a lot more diapers <laughs> on a day. Well, Santa, I have thoroughly enjoyed the, the sitting down with you, getting to know you a little bit more. I, I know you, you the listeners – you know, they got to know you a little bit better now. They can see the path. They can understand a little bit more on, on how potentially they could alter their career paths to end up in a place like you are right now. And, and I, I, you're an inspiration to us all. So thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us and, and going through this hero episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and Santa, I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, it was my pleasure. Uh, I had a great uh, conversation with you as well. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. -S 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 -S